2022 on the rise, we're going to be looking at 10 cards you're going to want to find yourself making sure that you have for the new year. Make sure you smash the crap on that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. Number one on our list is going to be Cross Out Designator, and this is simply because this card, cheap man. I actually saw Sam the other day making a Twitter post talking about buying all copies of Cross Out Designator for $30. I was like, wow, you know, like. We've really hit that bottom out point for this, but you're like, well, why don't I want to make sure I have a copy of these? Because any sort of application that this card has in the format will send the card price to the moon, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what we're sitting on here. A very cheap, potential, stable card that is seeing hardly no play right now, except for standardized mirror application. And we're not even like in a format where like mirrors really matter right now. So this is just one of those cards that you keep an eye on and go, all right, it's $90 something I want to allocate to this because I don't foresee this card getting a reprint anytime soon. And because of that, I would definitely make sure that I had a set of these because highest risk versus highest return, absolutely sitting right here. Next up is Forbidden Droplet. Now, I know some of you guys can't afford droplets, but we'll talk about that here in a second. So the reason why droplet is something you want to have is we've actually kind of seen droplet in and out of this format a little bit here. Uh, the fact that it can be a high power globalized negate across a huge field so that you can one card start or play the game feels pretty good. All right. The only time that droplet stinks is when you don't have enough resources to banish or if your opponent's like, haha, JK, I got the droplet back. Um, in terms of power shifting scales for a card, Droplet's one of those cards, and I, I really hate to see that this thing has maintained a 100 plus price point, and is just going, hey guys, you might want to make sure that you have a set of these. I don't know if we'll get another reprint of this anytime soon, besides, you know, we've already got the ulti and double secrets. One more print would definitely help, but in terms of sheer board breaking power, this card is one of the most powerful cards you're probably going to see in the next year. Next up here, we have the alternative Forbidden Chalice. Now, I broke these up because some decks actually prefer Chalice versus Droplet, and that's kind of interesting. Um, we've I probably have seen more tiny variants playing Chalice. thing was, Chalice has kind of fallen out of the format. We saw more of an insurgence of the Droplet back into the format here, and then the the Tenyi decks just kind of said, screw, we're just going to play the uh, the, the Tenyi Searcher anyway. <laughs> we're just Heavenly Dragon Cycle like, just does everything we want it to. So right now I've seen less Chalice in the format, but in terms of just setting up to negate something um, for really no cost, that's what you really get out of the value of Chalice versus Droplet. All right? It's a one card negate that, yeah, it gives them 400 attack boost, but it's a spot removal that you can do your thing. And then, you know, versus Droplet, it's non-targeting versus targeting. So, you know, the budget alternative is exactly what it seems, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, unfortunately, it's not crazy. You know, you just got to kind of make up your mind. Next up is going to be Dark Ruler No More. And I'm going to put Nibiru here in the same category as this. Now, the reason why I'm going to lump these two together here is these are both cards that kind of bypass or put the opponent into a bad situation. Uh, Droplets, or, or excuse me, Dark Roll is very much in the same category as the board break capabilities of Droplet, but Dark Roller goes, no, just negate everything. Easy peasy. Nibiru is a defensive card that you can play via the opponent's turn and cut them off, alright? Dark Roller has seen a little bit less play this format, but going forward here, anytime that you see those big build a board decks, both Nibiru and both Dark Roller no more can break through those. I will usually see these two in application with each other because Nibiru is a preventative measure to cut them off and then Dark Ruler No More is the I'm going to clean up everything measure as well. So two very staple cards in my opinion. I'm just lumping them together here for the application of staples. All right, and speaking of staples here, of course, we have Infinite Permanence and Ash Blossom here. It shouldn't take a genius to know that two of the best modern era staples in Yu-Gi-Oh! are sitting right here, all right? At least Infinite Permanence got a structure deck, you know, reprint that brought the price way down. Ash Blossoms are still sitting at a devastating $18 to $19 a piece price, but at this point in time, both of these cards very, very staple powerhouses in the format, all right? Both of these, I mean, I guess if you can't afford imperms, you do have the effect veiler that you can have access to, which is absolutely fine as an alternative to that, but please, for staples in the modern era, these are two things that you're going to want to make sure that you have. And don't be like that guy that's like, oh, I don't need Ash Blossoms, and no, I don't need Imperms. And then you're like, oh, well, 
crap, you know, like my, my tier 500 combo deck just went down the crapper because of the ban list. You know, it, it happens. I've seen it enough. So, you know, point of these videos. Don't be caught with your pants down, ladies and gentlemen. Next up here is Drone Lockbird. Oh boy, more staples, Robbie. Um, we've seen recently that when you have these super irritable combo decks that want to search out all their pieces, Droll and Lockbird ruins days, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I love when a Lyricalist player has to end their turn because you just cut off their entire search engine for the turn. I don't care if you end on like an assembled Nightingale. You're not playing the game any further. That's the point of Droll and Lockbird right now. All right, going forward, we will continue to see the same thing here. Anytime searchability is at the top when your opponent's interacting with their deck 10, 15 times in turn, yes, that happens, ladies and gentlemen. And when one single card goes, eh, no, no fun allowed for the opponent. That's where, like, the pendulum swing. All right, so Troll and Lockbird, definitely going to be one of those cards that you're going to want to make sure that you have, at least for the whole course of next year. Now, next up is Phantom Knights, and you're like, well, Robbie, what if they ban Scythe? You're just telling me to waste my money, you fat tub of art. No, all right. We've already seen that once the adventurer stuff comes to the TCG here, we already saw how Phantom Knights warped the OCG, uh, especially with Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, all the rest of the BS card pool we have here. And the Phantom Knight package has been reprinted now to the point of it's affordable. All right, besides like the Dagda Scythe interactions, you know, things like that cheapness is what we strive for unless you're somebody out there that needs max rarity perfection but the fact that all of these crazy one card combos can be available to you at your disposal ladies and gentlemen you don't have an excuse not to have the fan of package now longevity for this is probably going to burn out in the first two to three months all right so this isn't like a super long-term pickup here but from where i'm sitting here if you or somebody wants to have some fun in the very early stages of the format pick this up all right next up here is going to be sky striker now we just saw the ocg get that busted to crap <sighs> spell card that's a quick play it just goes hey you want to link summon just forbidden droplet pay the cost send something oh it's resolving enjoy your free link monster ladies and gentlemen. oh you can't link summon besides sky striker cards okay cards nuts ladies and gentlemen um, we've already seen it. It's spinning heads in the OCG right now in the midst of their branded format. And I will say that, you know, seeing Striker back at it again is good. Um, the downside is Woodwankers are expensive. If you're somebody that can find a good deal on this, I would definitely make sure that I would have access to pick this up because, you know, jokes aside, this could be a good deck mid year, depending on whenever the heck they want to give us that spell card. Knowing Konami, it's going to take a whole freaking year. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it out here. Next up here is going to be the Outer World Banshee in Zombie World, but as one of. So you're probably like, the heck? Why are you mentioning this? So one cool thing that the branded package can do is you can actually send the Outer World Banshee with branded fusion with the Fallen of Albaz. That way you can set up for a Zombie World during the opponent's turn through the Outer World or Necro World Banshee, whatever the heck its name is. All right, the fact that you have that interaction is hilarious to me. All right, and I just wanted to give the quick little nod to this here and go, hey, branded players, you guys like making your Flunderies match up 3,000 times easier? No problem, oh man. Just go ahead and mill off some zombie world and watch your opponent not be able to tribute summon because it's hilarious. You don't care about making anything on the field a zombie. You just care that your opponent can't tribute summon. Easy peasy, all right? It's a shame that that M-Pen in your hand is a wing beast monster and not, in fact, a zombie. <laughs> you see what we did there? And then the last mention here is going to be Legendary Ocean. And I uh, I brought this up previously. Uh, all things aside, I've been having so much fun with the Kairishin Turbo deck that it's nuts. Right, and I only like, like to give a little shout out here to these because I think this deck is like tier two at best, but it is some of the most fun I've had. Kyra Shen's a floodgate, makes it so your opponent can only have one face of non-water monster on the field. And watching the looks on their face when you're able to just legendary ocean normal summon and just stare at them, you're like, they're, they're just like, what's going on? Because it doesn't cause a chain to force the opponent to go down. So just on summon, it forces everything down to one. So you get some free board wipe applications 
it, it's fun. All right, but there's a Hobby League print of the card, and that's really what I wanted to aim on here. Is just make sure you have a set of these. All right, whether or not you want to play, I don't expect anything to go terminally crazy, ladies and gentlemen. But I love fun ideas. So guys, what do you guys think? Please comment below. Tell me what you guys think. If you guys smash over the crap button, that subscribe button, so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day. Some more cool awesome content. You guys stay safe out there. Peace. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.